EU finance ministers have been working on a rescue package to help member states hit by the coronavirus outbreak. Expectations ahead of their meeting on Tuesday were high. It is arguably the most sizable and ambitious package ever prepared by the Eurogroup. The package is worth more than half a trillion dollars and includes three main proposals. Providing credit lines, offering additional liquidity to businesses and funding a short-time working scheme that cuts hours but not jobs. But after 16 hours of discussions, the ministers failed to agree on a way forward. We are, what these three proposals concern, We've almost come to an agreement, but not quite yet. This is good news for next time, and it concerns all three programs. At one point, almost everyone agreed with us in Germany, but only almost everyone. Their sticking point, the so-called Corona bonds. Italy and Spain, among the countries hardest hit by the outbreak, want a joint fund to share the mounting costs. Something Germany and the Netherlands have resisted. Corona bonds would mean mutualizing Eurozone debt and we would never ever get out of this one again. I don't understand why there's no one saying, dear ECB, do just like you did before, but you buy the government securities of Italy, France, Spain and so on, and then we have peace. But mutualizing Eurozone debt makes no sense because if the strong have to support the weak, the strong at some point will also get weak. Germany's GDP is set to shrink by 10 percent in the second quarter, possibly triggering a devastating contraction in Europe's biggest economy. On average, total economic output in 2020 is expected to decline by 4.2 percent. This would be the deepest recession since the end of the Second World War. France's economy has also shown its worst performance since 1945, shrinking 6 percent in the first quarter. The government has suggested it could bail out major companies affected by the outbreak, including carmaker Renault and airline conglomerate Air France KLM. The finance ministers have until Thursday to overcome their differences, and the stakes are high. For every week businesses are locked down, and every job lost, the European economy will shrink further. Sibel Karkush, TRT World. Well, for more, let's go to Jacques Reland in Saint Malo in France. He's a senior research fellow at the Global Policy Institute. Welcome back to the program, Jacques. Now, we're months into this coronavirus pandemic in Europe. Why can't the 19 countries that share the euro agree on a coordinated financial package this far in? It's because of the eternal divisions in uh, Europe, in the European Union and within the Eurozone. Uh, we know that there's a, a common money, a single, single currency, but there's no budget, no common budget. There's no fiscal, no tax harmonization. There's no leader, no minister as such. Uh, leading the policy for the whole thing. So the euro, which was meant to bring countries together, we know has actually uh, pushed them apart in many ways. We know that there's a big difference between the northern countries who have stable economies, uh, fairly sound public finances, and the southern countries who have suffered a lot as a result of the crisis in 2008. And we were not helped by, or eventually helped, but at a very high price imposed by the northern country, asking them to carry out austerity policies. We nearly brought them to their knees. And uh, we have now a replay of that divide, which was pre prevalent until 2012, when eventually they agreed to the formation of the European stability mechanism to help the banks. And it resulted in a situation at a very high cost for this country. So this divide is still there. But now I hope that uh, the northern countries will realize that maybe if they don't show solidarity with the southern countries, they are not, if there is a crisis now, it's not because they haven't been managing their public finances well, it's because of this pandemic, and if they can't show solidarity, then the euro, the, uh, the EMU could be in danger and it would also threaten uh, the European because it will have a bad impact in the public opinions of these countries in the south and could lead 
to uh, arise in populist movements and increased feelings against the European project and could be its death knell if mm. they don't manage to agree to a common solution to a common problem. Well, that's right. And that growing resentment against countries like Germany and the EU as a whole is already happening in countries like Spain and Italy, which have been really hard hit by this coronavirus. So why is it that countries like Germany and the so-called frugal four, which includes the Netherlands, Finland, Austria, uh, and as I mentioned, Germany, why are they seemingly reluctant to extend a helping hand to those southern countries, which, as you say, are being affected by this pandemic, which is beyond their control? It's because they think that would increase their, the issue there. The only really sticking point is the issue of this famous corona bonds. And it's the idea that instead of countries borrowing uh, at uh, different uh, interest rates, the old uh, Euro, uh, European countries, EMU countries, would borrow together, which would bring down the cost of borrowing for everyone except for those four frugal countries. But let's not forget that, well, let's not just focus on that issue. Uh, really, Europe has actually acted uh, since the beginning of the crisis. It took a little while, but for example, on the 23rd of March, there was this decision which would not have been even thought of uh, three months ago that we decided to get rid of the stability pact, that now in this situation of yeah. crisis, countries can borrow as much as they can. There's also been the action of the ECB, which has a kind of a, a firepower of a thousand billion euros and had promised to buy the debts, uh, the sovereign debts and the public debts of, of banks, of the bonds of, of, of banks. So that has helped a lot mm. and that has reduced the spread. You know, the, the spread is the big issue for the sovereign group. And which, which uh, rate do you borrow? And when uh, Christine Lagarde said she did not care about the spread, oh, she made a big mistake because we saw that now uh, Italy right. would have to borrow at 3%. Okay. And but no, Mr. I'm so sorry to interrupt, uh, Mr. Land, but we will have to leave it there. But thank you again, as always, for sharing with us. And solidarity your is not charity, and it's everyone is in the same boat and hope that these uh, northern countries understand it. That's right. Jacques Roland, thank you, as always.